Hey everyone, welcome to another video. And in this video, we are going to talk about H1B. Recently, I got an email from my company that hey, we are going to apply for your H1B, and these are the things which has changed over the years, and these are the things which might affect your H1B. I also get a lot of messages and Instagram DMs from people saying that hey, is H1B gonna go away? Because do you, right now. There's a process of election going on. There are a lot of presidential candidates and everybody talks about what is the next big thing which is going to come and change the H1B. Moreover, this year, uh, there's a new rule. There's a new way how they are going to select uh, candidates or how they are going to put people in the lottery system for H1B. There's a change in the lottery system. So they are going to give preference to students who are from STEM and who are doing degrees in the United States. I've made a beautiful, beautiful video. I've spent hours and hours and hours on those videos. So I'm going to leave the link in the description, but I wanted to still include a clip of that video. So let's just let's just roll it. This will explain to you in a jiffy about the number of H1Bs out there and how the process works. Let's put 30 seconds on the clock and talk about what I mentioned in the previous video. There are mainly these cohorts, undergrads, grad, postgraduates, H1B and spouses. And they are on these visas, F1, H1B, H4. There are 85,000 H1Bs given per year out of which 20,000 is booked for master's students and 6,800 are reserved for residents of Chile and Singapore. Remaining 58, 1,200 are being extremely exploited by Indian IT companies. You can apply for cap exempt H1B and I'll make a video about it. All right, back to the normal video. Now that you understand that, uh, let's see what we were expecting when Donald Trump became the president. Uh, we were expecting that the minimum salary will be raised from 60,000 US dollars to 100,000 US dollars for the people on H1B. And there will be a new criteria presented for H1B workers. Well, these are still speculations and nothing has been cleared until now. But in the new proposed rule titled as registration requirement for petitioners seeking to file H1B petitions on behalf of CAP subject aliens. That, that was not easy to remember. Okay, here are the details on what is proposed. We're going to use a, use the word petition a lot. A petition is a formal return request signed by many people appealing to authority with respect to a particular case. Consider it as a file of uh, every form, evidence and supporting documents. The current H-1B selection process goes like this. All the employers submit a complete H-1B application package. This takes a lot of time, human power, money, resource, a lawyer, a human resource person. This petition is then submitted to USCIS by your employer. Once USCIS receives it, it runs into their lottery system. All the people who receive H-1B are of course like super happy and the people who do not receive it gets the fees back. Now this process includes a lot of human work in terms of handling physical docs, preparing the file, managing all of this. Also, last year USCIS received a, about 192,000 registration and every registration have to put it put in the full-fledged petition. Now, here is how the proposed H1B selection process looks like. First of all, everything becomes electronic. The employers at the first stage registers himself or herself online. All of these registrations are turned into the lottery system. Now focus, earlier the lottery system was first, master students will be run into 20,000 spaces and the remaining will be put into the 65,000 visa spaces. Now they're proposing to turn that around. First, you are put in the common pool with everyone. Uh, into that 65,000 pool and all the people who have master's degree and a degree from the US University will then be put into 20,000 pool. To do a quick recap, the current visa system looks like this. All the students are put into first um, the 20,000 pool. The remaining of them who, ha who didn't get a visa will be put into the 65,000 visa spaces. Now, they're proposing that they want to turn that around. Everyone who has registered or who has filed a petition for H-1B will be put into the 65,000 pool first. And then 
the remaining people who have been rejected from that the remaining students who have been rejected from that out of those only the students will be put into the 20000 pool the other people who are rejected will get a refund this reversing of order will increase the chances for us degree holders by 16% which is a good sign for all the students who are watching this video. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to read some of the facts which came through in that email. It is anticipated that there will be 5 to 10 percent overage wait list to tap into if needed to ensure all H1B numbers are used. It is not currently clear how this will be communicated. There was an increase of RFEs that is request for evidence uh, which has been increased from 23% in 2015 to 48% in 2019. RFE stands for Request for Evidence, as I mentioned. Uh, your case would receive a RFE when they want more documents or they want more proof that, hey, this is the kind of a work I'm doing and it matches exactly the degree or the masters I got from a US university or your qualifications previously matches the qualifications uh, of your current work. There was also an increase in H-1B denial rates from 6% in 2015 to 24% in 2019. Now an increase, now an increase in uh, rejection of H-1B might be for different reasons, but one dominant reason which everybody sees is Trump administration. It is also anticipated that the H-4, uh, H-4 spouse work permit is going to go away. But since I've come here in 2017, I've heard that every single year that they're going to remove H4. And I think that was a big sell for Trump that we are going to remove H4 and we are going to make strict changes at H1B. And every year since then, I have been hearing the same thing that H4 will go away, but it's still there. My cousin who's working in Chicago, she's on H4 right now. It's going to affect a lot of people if H4 goes away. and. They keep saying that H4 will go away, but I haven't heard any major changes on it yet. One factor which uh, which is the biggest overarching problem is that people spread fake news. I got an email yesterday that, hey, my relative in the US who's working in a government office, he doesn't even know which government office, and he's working in a government office, is, says, is saying that H1B will go away. Now, do not believe all of these things until unless there's credential sources or news channel which are talking about it. There are all these like this exact video where I'm talking about H or B. There are a lot of people, a lot of news channels to get more clicks on the news articles, put H or B and put Trump's picture. That's what I've been doing, but I've been telling the exact news what is happening. But you see all these uh, headlines that, hey, H or B is going away or H or B is uh, gonna go in 2020 it's not going to happen h1b is going is a h1b affects a lot of people and h1b also brings in a lot of talent from across the world to the us which is important to us economy i've told this multiple times that do not spread fake news like this i've also told multiple times that h1b is not gonna go away yes there is going to be strict ruling on that but again it's not gonna go away uh you can take a word of mine on that Thank you so much guys for watching. I know this was a small one, but again, I'm gonna leave the link in the description. Go watch those videos. Those are really helpful for you. I learned a lot while uh, while going through documents for that video. Thank you so much and until then I'll see you in the next one.